Eddie Van Halen, lead guitarist and namesake for the iconic hard rock band Van Halen, and among the most influential musicians of his generation, suffered almost as many personal tragedies as he created classic riffs and songs. Van Halen's innovative two-hand tapping guitar technique made heavier rock faster and more melodic, and he weathered the controversy of his band navigating one of the most successful band member replacements ever, as well as one of the most unfortunate musician replacements in music history. Van Halen, the man behind the band, still went on to help sell millions of albums, chart plenty of hit singles, and get inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as a matter of course for more than 40 years. Van Halen demonstrated superhuman-level guitar prowess on tracks like Eruption, Panama, Jump, and Runnin' with the Devil, but the musician was subject to the same human problems and complications of living as everyone else. This is Tragic Life Eddie Van Halen. He experienced childhood bullying and discrimination. With sales of 80 million copies of its albums, Van Halen is one of the most successful American bands of all time, and that triumph is an American dream story. Brothers Alex and Eddie Van Halen are immigrants, born in the Netherlands in the 1950s, and settling in Pasadena, California with their Dutch father and Indonesian mother when they were in elementary school. The Van Halen kids experienced racism both in the Netherlands and in the United States, because of their mixed racial background, the Van Halens were cruelly and crudely labeled half-breeds by their peers in Dutch schools. Van Halen singer David Lee Roth told WTF with Mark Marin, Those homeboys grew up in a horrifying racist environment to where they actually had to leave the country. Arriving in the U.S. in the 1960s, neither Eddie nor Alex Van Halen knew the language, which encouraged more racially motivated bullying. Eddie said, I wasn't able to speak English, and used to get my ass kicked because I was a minority. Attending a segregated school, Van Halen was ordered to study with black students. Coped with substance addiction. Eddie Van Halen's decades-long alcohol issues turned problematic when he was a teenager. Imbibing booze to curb performance anxiety during early gigs, Van Halen developed a dependency. He told I was an alcoholic and I needed alcohol to function. I got drunk before I'd show up to high school. My ninth grade science teacher, he could smell the alcohol and he told me don't drink anything you can't see through. And I was like so vodka. And he said yeah, which was great because that was my drink, Van Halen added. In the 1970s and 1980s, the band Van Halen kept up a routine of playing evening concerts and then partying into the night. Eddie Van Halen would head back to his hotel room to work on songs while also drinking vodka and taking cocaine. The death of his father in 1986 prompted the guitarist to quit drinking, but the sobriety wouldn't last. The heavy consumption continued and affected Van Halen's personality. Van Halen checked into a rehabilitation facility, and it was enough of an emergency that he missed his band's induction ceremony into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. His father died from the effects of alcoholism. Just after the band turmoil surrounding the exit of David Lee Roth and the arrival of Sammy Hagar, Van Halen guitarist and drummer Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen respectively suffered a tremendous personal loss. Their father died. The brothers were professional musicians just like their father had been. Jan Van Halen played clarinet and saxophone in jazz and swing bands in Europe. The Dutch military's ensemble and nightclubs in Southern California upon the family's immigration to the U.S. in the early 1960s. The older Van Halen performed professionally until 1972, when he lost a finger in a trailer-lifting mishap. It's from Jan Van Halen that Eddie Van Halen believes he may have picked up the habits that led to his addiction issues. Alcohol use was a stage fright solution passed on from father to son. He almost died from a rare disease. Early in 1988, Eddie Van Halen and his then-wife actor Valerie Bertinelli took a vacation to Turtle Island to commemorate their seventh wedding anniversary. At some point during the trip to the luxurious resort area near Australia's Great Barrier Reef, a mosquito bit Van Halen. He thought nothing of it, until after he returned home to Los Angeles and experienced a severe bout of fever. When the number reached 105 degrees, he sought treatment at Cedars Sinai Hospital, where doctors diagnosed him with a rare tropical disease. Briefly hospitalized, 
Van Halen made a full recovery from the seldom diagnosed fever. His time and traction led to some lifestyle changes too. Van Halen told Rolling Stone, for some reason, that kinda made me look at things a little different. Imagining being in there for an OD or alcohol, it kinda wised me up. So I've been sober for 20 days, and I'm starting to feel the light at the end of the tunnel, starting to feel good. He suffered from chronic pain issues. Eddie Van Halen Riley nicknamed the tour in support of the 1995 Van Halen album Balance the Ambulance Tour, because he and his brother played many concerts while under physical duress. Drummer Alex Van Halen wore a neck brace to account for three cracked vertebrae, while Eddie Van Halen suffered from excruciatingly painful hip issues. The guitarist put off treatment for years, first mentioning his problems to the press after the 1996 MTV Video Music Awards, which included a reunion with former singer David Lee Roth that fell apart because Roth was annoyed that Van Halen talked at length about his hip. In late 1997 he cancelled a scheduled hip replacement surgery because his doctor wanted him to wait and endure for a bit longer until a state-of-the-art artificial joint became available. Finally, in November 1999 Van Halen got his new hip. At age 44 he was younger than the average hip replacement patient by more than 20 years. The new body part was especially necessary because of a diagnosis of non-traumatic avascular necrosis, an insane disease you definitely don't want. In necrosis, fatty patches develop, preventing blood vessels from accessing bone which can lead to death of the bone. He first marriage was fraught with infidelity and drug abuse. When he walked down the aisle in 1981, Eddie Van Halen was a rock star with a partner more famous than he was. Less than a year after they met backstage at a concert, Van Halen and award-winning One Day at a Time star Valerie Bertinelli got married. Drugs played a large role in the marriage even before it officially began. With the couple taking cocaine as they filled out a questionnaire from their wedding officiant, and then frequently throughout the relationship, Bertinelli would eventually quit cocaine, while Van Halen's drinking ramped up. The marriage also suffered under the weight of infidelity. Bertinelli told, Yes I did four years into our marriage, cheat. She told the Oprah Winfrey show that she discovered evidence of her husband's cheating and unhappiness. I heard him on the phone, and he was talking about how he just wanted out of the marriage. The couple separated in 2001, and filed for divorce in 2005. He almost died from diverticulitis. After a hip replacement to stave off bone death, a cancer diagnosis, and a hospital stay for a rare fever, Eddie Van Halen faced another severe, painful and prolonged health crisis in 2012. In August of that year, Van Halen was admitted to a hospital for emergency surgery to treat a serious case of diverticulitis. Presenting with symptoms including nausea, vomiting, fever, constipation, and unrelenting abdominal pain, Diverticulitis occurs when pouches found in the large intestine grow inflamed and infected. Only the most advanced diagnoses, like the one Van Halen received, require emergency surgery to repair the intestinal pouches. Because Van Halen needed surgery, and as many as six months to recover, Van Halen the band had to cancel its remaining tour dates for 2012. Van Halen found himself laid up for even longer, when during his recuperation he broke some of his surgical stitches. That led to another infection in his intestine, requiring another hospitalization, and another surgery, in which doctors removed the affected part of the guitarist's colon. His rivalry with David Lee Roth was never resolved. Multi-platinum bestsellers like Van Halen Women and Children First in 1984, made Van Halen one of the biggest bands on the planet from the late 1970s onward. That was threatened in 1985 when a core member departed. And the reason why David Lee Roth really left Van Halen to pursue a solo career and acting. The band brought in Sammy Hagar to sing, and the band continued on for a decade. When Hagar didn't feel like participating in a couple of recording projects, Van Halen invited Roth back. The reformed original lineup fell apart when Van Halen didn't like Roth's attention getting preening during the 1996 MTV Video Music Awards, but the singer did take part in some tours in the 2000s. But that was just business. Roth told, We've never gotten along, we have always hated each other, right up until the last phone call. 
Roth agreed in an interview with Billboard, which he sat for just before heading out on tour with Roth, he does not want to be my friend. 